Hey everyone, welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today we will be doing another portrait with our Holbein gouache. We are going to be painting this photo I found on Pinterest. I saw in the comments that the model's name is Rachel, but I couldn't really find her on Instagram, so I will have it on my references board on my Pinterest and I will leave the link to that in the description. The colors that I chose are my usual. There's my yellows and blues, but this time I also added in burnt amber and instead of my regular pure blue, I just used Prussian blue this time. This was a sketch that I initially didn't want to paint over. I sketched it on my Cotman watercolor paper which is really smooth and ideal for sketching but it's not really that great with very wet mediums and so even though when I planned it in my head I wanted to do a very dark watercolor base I knew before I started that it was gonna have to be with gouache and the only way for it to work is for me to paint over it in sections so I started with my darkest values first which are her pupils and then some parts of her irises so I just painted those with pure black and then I just slowly started building up my values from there. I think that when you're painting in sections like this, it's easier to paint out your darkest values first. And especially when it's pure black like this, you would always know that you have that one accurate base point to reference your colors in, especially values wise. So if I had accidentally made the skin around her eyes lighter because I have that very black baseline to work with it would just look too cartoonish so I know to adjust my values around that For most of her skin tones it's actually just a mixture of burnt amber, yellow and red but I think the standout color for me was using the Prussian blue for the cooler parts of her face and it's something that I wouldn't normally use because it's such a cool and dark blue but for this one I really really loved mixing it with my burnt umber to get the exact shade of cool shadows that I wanted for her it really is such a beautiful color it sort of has a green tint to it which I think is more natural than the pure blue that I normally use, at least for skin tones. And it just works really well for the parts of her skin that are cooler toned than some areas. So in parts like the eyelids and also her lip colors that that's on the outer edges, I just really love how those colors worked well for those, for those areas. So basically her skin colors are reddish browns for her mid-tones. For the highlights I actually chose to lean it closer to pink. And on the shadows we have the mixture of greenish brown that we got with the burnt umber and the Prussian blue. And I think those colors really work together. I do think now that I'm looking at it that I could have gone, I could have done better with the blending on her face. Uh, I think it, it needs more work in that area. But towards the end, I actually kind of started liking the look. I don't, maybe later on I will work over those areas again. But at the time, I really liked it where it was. And so now I want to talk about this technique, which is just painting section by section. And I don't know how it seems to you guys while you're watching it, but I usually watch painting videos where they paint like this and it just looks so easy and effortless that when I tried it myself at first, I just realized that it was not that at all. In fact, I think it's much harder to paint like this than for me to have just built the first layers up with looser paint because then I would have a reference color for each section. For this one, I think about it, I really 
built the whole painting up with the colors of her pupils as a baseline. So there could be things along the way that became hard because of that. And also just mixing those colors took a lot of time for me to finish. I think a lot of this is an exercise for how much I know about color mixing because this really this really took me a lot of time. I think I in the end I ended up with three or four hours of footage and then I had to cut it down to about 15 minutes which is tough already. But yeah, a lot of the time was just spent trying to get the exact color mixtures right. I think people with more experience with color mixing would actually take about half of that time to paint this. But it took a while for me. And also while mixing, I had to account for the color shifting in advance, so I had to know what it looks like when it's dry versus when I'm mixing the colors, which sometimes just looks completely different. And also just trying to figure out where exactly to paint those colors when I do get them right. Just trying to figure out which section they should go and also which section they should be contained in so that I'm not just painting over big areas with the same color. And I think that was the problem that I had in my older paintings because when I look at them, I use the same color mixture to paint bigger areas. So my older paintings just have this sort of flat look to them. I, this time I think I was more aware of that. Like when I painted her nose, there's a section on the bridge that has more pink to it. And then on the small area right above it, that one has a cooler undertone than the pink one. So even though those two make up such a small area of her nose, I still had to make sure that they weren't just one uniform color so it looks closer to the photo. With all of that being said, painting like this is so great because you don't ever lose your line work, which is usually something that happens with gouache. Sometimes about midway through you would lose your line work completely if you're building up your, your whole paintings in layers. So when I'm painting like this, even though it takes more time, it really helps by having most of the line work exposed while I'm painting on it. I always get asked about what I do in those moments, but usually, other than just working with looser paint initially, I would just <laughs> draw over my layers when I lose them completely. I don't think there's a lot of other ways around that because gouache is an opaque medium. And I wish I could help more, but that really is all that I do. When it came to me painting her hair, I think on film it kind of just looks like I used one base color to paint her whole head with, but actually there's I've also put in different shifts in tones in there, like on some areas I would have a mixture of black and the Prussian blue, and for the mid-tones it would be more of a mixture of the Prussian blue and the burnt umber. And then for the lightest parts of her hair it would sometimes just be burnt umber. So it looks like it's just one solid color, but I think when, when it tries you can see those shifts and it just has a different effect than had if I had painted over the whole thing with black.
when I paint like this, I actually get comments from people who, who I think haven't tried gouache, but it looks very similar to oil paints. But at least in videos that I have where I'm working in this style, I guess, I can actually see how they would think that. But if you've tried oils and just are starting with gouache, I think you might be tripped up a, a little bit by gouache and not only by the big thing where it is reworkable once it's dry, but it's but it also feels completely different. It's really hard to describe, but gouache sort of has this powdery feeling while you're working on it, and I've noticed this even across brands, no matter which price point I bought them from, but it just feels really different. It doesn't have this silky, soft feeling you get when you're working with oil paints. And other than that, there's also the very frustrating thing where it just dries a different value than when you were mixing it with, so... With oil paints, I think the most beautiful thing about them is that the colors just are very consistent from when you're mixing them all the way to once they're dry. The gouache isn't like that. Um, it's just its own unique thing, which sounds really frustrating, but it also is what keeps me coming back to it, even though I do have a hard time with it while I'm painting. And when it came to painting the details of her hair, I think I applied different methods on different parts of it because up front I think it's just her it's just her natural hair and on most of her head she has it in locks. So because for the base of her of the top of her locks I I use those different shifts in colors. What I'm doing now is just painting over the darkest areas after. Since the bottom is mostly just dark, what I had to do was paint over those with lighter highlights on top. One last thing I noticed was that I really don't use that much paint when I'm using my Holbein gouache versus when I had to work with my Mia gouache. Maybe it's in the qualities of the paints, but I also think maybe it's because it's just because I have more experience with gouache now. So I really want to want to find that out. So I think that I might have to buy another set of my Mia gouache now, just so I can test those out. Because I did have to throw away my last one because of mold. But yeah, for the background, I actually messed it up by dropping my brush in there, and I asked the Discord server how how to approach it and I got this great suggestion from Lunda Bo and, and Taco to play around with the splashes and to add more of them so I tried that digitally and it looks really great but I just don't think I trust myself enough to not mess up her face with those blots and so I'm just leaving it like this in my head those are birds and not just splashes in there I think in the future I might paint over the background and try that out but but for now I'm just too much of a coward to actually do it and yeah that will be it for this video thank you everyone for watching and I will be seeing you guys again soon